Next question is from Jay Emke. Is it ever a good idea to listen to your appetite when it comes to nutrition? I feel like as long as we eat healthy and don't completely overdo it, our appetite should be a good indicator of how much food our body really needs. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give you an answer, but there's a strong uh, disclaimer here. So, yes, your appetite is the best indicator of how much you should eat. Now, here's the disclaimer. Yeah, oh, maybe for 5% yeah, of you. Most, yeah, you have, to have, <laughs> you have to have a healthy uh, appetite. Healthy meaning, not like what, when I say healthy appetite, some people think, oh, that means you have a big appetite. No, that's not what I mean. No. I mean a balanced appetite. You also have to understand how to read your body's signals and have a good relationship to food and your body you and your emotions. Under, yeah, you have to understand cravings versus real hunger too. Yeah, that's it. If you don't have that understanding, if you grew up in a way like most people, um, where you valued food mainly for its its flavor and its hedonistic value. If you've learned to eat food to make you feel better when you're stressed or anxious or depressed, um, if you've uh, if you have a body image uh, where you don't like the way you look and so you've manipulated your food to change it in a way that's unhealthy, if you're like most people, your appetite is a terrible initially is a terrible way to judge what you should eat because then people say, well, I'm hungry all the time. Like right now I could eat a donut. Right now I could eat pizza, right? I just ate four slices of pizza. I'm still hungry for ice cream. They don't understand what real appetite means. They don't have a good connection. So it's like, it's almost like trying to read a map. It's like, does, is a map a real great way to navigate? It is if you know how to read a map. If you don't know how to read a map, it's just a piece of paper. It's not going to tell you anything. I don't know how to ordinate, orient myself. I don't know where north is, south is. This map is its more valuable to me to burn it in a fire to keep me warm than it is to help me navigate. Your appetite, if you don't know how to read it and you don't have a good relationship with yourself and with food, it's not going to help. Yeah, I think this is a dangerous place for most people. I just really do. I just don't think there's a lot of people at this level. I think in order to be, not only would you have had to really pay attention to all these markers of like how my skin is, how my sleep is, how my energy is, how my hair, my stool. Yeah, not only will you have to tease all that stuff out to really get an indicator on like how your body is responding to the foods that you're eating. You also probably have to be eating a 99% whole food diet too. Yeah. Because that's the processed foods are engineered for you to make you want to eat more, and it, and they're calorie dense. So if you're relying they're, on basically they're appetite drugs, Think right? Of it that way, right? So if if you're if those are if those are in your diet, and that, this includes healthy products too, by the way, you know protein bars. I mean that was one of the things I remember telling you guys when. I was competing. I, I noticed that uh, I did some shows where I, I allowed um, you know protein bars into my diet, and then I had other ones where I did none at all. And this was just for personal. I just was curious to uh, if it would change how how difficult was a diet, if it would change the way my body looked on stage. And it was very minimal for the average person. But what I noticed was the the cravings of those things. Like, you know, I would go from not having any protein bars whatsoever, and then I'd have one, and like, oh my god, it would stimulate me wanting another one. Before you knew it, I was and because they're balanced macro wise, I could get up to eating four protein bars in a diet, still diet for a show, and get in good shape and look good. But what I noticed was the way it would promote me to want to eat more and more of those, which made it more difficult for me to restrict in calories. So. It really depends on how your current diet is, how much work you've put into really learning your body's natural signals of of, of uh, hunger or are you being satisfied. So to me, there's a very, very small percentage of people that, I mean, this is true intuitive eating, right? Like this is the the pinnacle that I think most of us are trying to get to. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm in this over 20 years now and still don't think I've mastered this. I think I have a, I think I have a good a good idea and a good control, yeah. but I don't think I've mastered well, it. Yeah, and, and two, you could just eat potatoes and be satisfied, but you could be malnourished you know, at the same time. And so you have to put some thought and effort in what you're consuming still, always. And that's just something that you, know, uh, you don't want to just fly by one indicator alone. No, no. And in the past, I mean, it was what was available to you. And whether or not you you hunted something and killed it, and then your your body would tell you when to stop eating it, so you don't, because you could hurt yourself by overeating. But that wasn't hard to do because it wasn't heavily processed. I mean, heavily processed foods, which include supplements uh, in many cases, uh, like protein bars and shakes and that kind of stuff. Um, they that's their number one goal is to make them as as palatable as possible, which essentially means overcoming your natural uh, satiety signals. That's what it means. In fact. I don't care what food category there is. I don't care if it's health food, junk food, 
dessert, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you want to guarantee yourself a number one selling food item, it has to be the one that is the most palatable. It doesn't matter. Even health foods. Go through all the health food categories and pick the number one selling mm -hmm. protein powder, the number one it's selling- the one that tastes the best. It's the one that's the most palatable. It's not the one that is deemed healthiest, the healthiest yeah. at all. So- so that's something you want to pay attention to. Now, and again, Adam talks about it being a, a pinnacle. It's a, it's not. A, I wouldn't even say it's a pinnacle. It's not a destination. It's still. It's always a process. It's just a process of awareness. It's a process of deconditioning yourself from how you've always ate before, and learning how to eat differently. Uh, you know, moving forward. But once you start to get the hang of it a little bit, you do start to read your your hunger a little better. Now, I mean, I mean it, years ago, I got to a point where I would eat a meal. And I was able to identify when I was satisfied. Before that, I wasn't satisfied until I was way over full. Like I would eat, you know, at a family mm -hmm. dinner and I'd eat, 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 and then I'd eat, eat yeah. dessert. And then at the end of the night, I'm like, I'm laying in bed and I'm like, oh my God, I can't. Like, yeah, I feel terrible. Like, what, did I, what have I done? Why do I always do this to myself? And then I'd repeat it again the next time around. I got to the point where, you know, I would eat a dinner and then I'd be like, uh, I'm actually satisfied. I don't. I, I'm reading my appetite. I'm reading my satiety a little bit better. Whereas in the past, and this may be because the way I was raised or the way we enjoy or celebrate food, it was like, how much can you possibly fit in yeah, your it's mouth? It's like a competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, this is a saying in, in my family. They'd say, do you have room for more? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> can you possibly squeeze Let me food? think about it. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> See what yeah. I can make. 